Sabbath Church.
God is good and all the time now, I know we could do a lot better than that uh, this is the church of the chosen not the frozen amen so, so let's try that again God is good and all the time praise the Lord praise the Lord truly it is a blessing to be in the house of God this Sabbath day and today we're gonna have a good time in the Lord amen I really do appreciate the ministry of Dr. Smith uh, she will be our featured soloist today and we'll hear from her a little bit more uh, later on in our worship service uh, but but of course I want to welcome you all to this place this special Sabbath this is the first weekend of there is hope revival amen and truly there is hope no matter what our situation is there is hope as long as God is on the throne there is hope amen and we've got to believe it we've got to claim it we've got to trust our Lord and Savior even during difficult times but this Sabbath is a very special Sabbath uh, because today it is a baptismal Sabbath. Amen? Uh, we have a number of individuals who will be giving their heart and their life to the Lord. Uh, they will be getting baptized. And of course, we have a guest speaker who will be here with us today. And you'll hear a little bit more about him later on in our worship service. And that is Pastor George Florman. Uh, he has been doing a phenomenal job this week. And we know that he has a word from on high. Amen. 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 Now, uh, this Sabbath, of course, um, and this week is not the only week of our revival. But for the next two weeks, uh, we will be having uh, guest speakers here. And uh, it is just a little mini revival that we're going to be having every Wednesday and Friday and then of course we'll come back on Sabbath morning um, and but next week we will be having Pastor Alex Royce Pastor Alex Royce he'll be with us next week starting on Wednesday and then to wrap things up the last week of August we will have Pastor Marvin Clark uh, he will be with us and so those are individuals who have lit this pulpit on fire in times past and they're going to do it again and we're going to ask what we're asking is that you do not keep the blessings to yourself but we're asking that you invite people to this revival amen all right that's that that's 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 a, that's a sorry amen let's try that again we want you to invite people to this revival amen Amen, amen. Invite your friends and family members, co-workers, and even your enemies. Even your enemies need to hear from the Lord. And so invite them so that they could be blessed and so that God's name can be uplifted. But what we want to let you know that this Sabbath day, that there will be lunch. Lunch prepared for all of our visitors all of our members of the church and right after our worship service what we're going to ask that you do is that right across the street right across the street at our uh, school we'll be giving out those to-go plates you can take those to-go plates and you can of course uh, go home or you can even eat them in the cafeteria but lunch is prepared for all of our visitors and all of our church members and actually for the next few weeks next few weeks I would say four weeks we're going to be having lunch prepared for all of our members and all of our visitors and so that should of course be a reason those of you are watching us online you should come to this place if you could go to work uh, if you could go on vacation if you can go to the mall you can come to the house of God amen and we want to encourage you to uh, come together and to not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together uh, because we want to give glory and honor to the Lord now we know that there are some individuals who have uh, health conditions and health concerns and we understand why you have to to stay home and you need to take care of yourself but if you don't have those concerns again we're inviting you to come to this place of worship but again it is a, a power pack day but one of the things we, we do want to do, we want to wish a happy birthday to those of you who had a birthday in the month 
of August. Uh, happy birthday. Um, bear with me. I'm going to try my best uh, to be bilingual at this time. But a bon fet uh, to those of you who have birthdays. Uh, Feliz Campeanos. Uh, uh, we, we want to, of course, wish you a happy birthday. And we, we pray that God will grant you many more birthdays. Of course, we, we have to count our blessings. There's some individuals who did not make it to this moment in their life. But the mere fact that God has blessed you with a birthday signifies how good God has been to you. And then those of you who are celebrated a wedding anniversary, we want to wish you a happy anniversary to those of you who had a wedding anniversary or having it in the month of August. Um, this Sabbath day, again, it is a power pack day. Uh, we are actually going to have a teacher's dedication. Of course, the brand new school year has begun at Doja. Uh, they started school this past Monday. And what we're going to do a little bit later on in our worship service, we are going to dedicate our teachers and our staff uh, and, and our, our school board members later, a little bit later on in our worship service. So this is just truly a, a Sabbath that we're going to have a celebration. Amen? Amen. Amen to that. Now, what, what we want you to know as well, and, and uh, Brother Wells, if you could help me out, there's a, a flyer right there on the side. You could pass that to me. No, uh, just there we go wonderful uh, what we want to remind you that on September the 8th to the 11th September the 8th to the 11th Southeastern Conference will be having a women's ministry retreat a women's ministry retreat that will be held at the embassy suite uh, right here in West Palm Beach and so I believe that we uh, have actually the flyers out on the table uh, in the foyer and if you want more information about that you can contact our women's ministry leader and sister Farrell and uh, of course it's going to be a spiritual delight it's a weekend event and all of the ladies are invited to that if you're interested in getting a room uh, please please uh, get one of those flyers that's on the back table and hopefully we can maybe put a flyer up uh, our technology team can do that uh, for those of you to see but please contact Sister Farrell if you are interested in going to uh, this women's ministry retreat. All the ladies are invited. Um, and so please, please do that. Support that event. Now, those of you who missed our Sabbath School broadcast, we do want to encourage you to go back and to watch it on the rebroadcast. Uh, the panel did a phenomenal job. And then for those of you who have young people, uh, there was um, children's Sabbath School that was also prepared for you and you can watch that on our YouTube channel and our Facebook page please go back watch it and please like and share that broadcast don't keep it to yourself those of you who are watching us online please also like and share the broadcast this is a way that we can evangelize that we can spread and share the gospel uh, to the world so like and share the broadcast uh, please do your part in evangelizing the world. We also want to remind you that here at the Daughter of Zion Church that we do have podcasts. If you want to audibly experience the worship service on either Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, or any other type of podcast, that all you simply have to do is uh, to, to search for our podcast, look for DOZ Weekly, DOZ Weekly, and subscribe and you can be blessed by our worship service um, for those of you who have not yet signed up for our text alert system if you have not yet signed up for our text alert system please do so text the word add to the number that's on the screen 561-468-3873 please sign up uh, this is something that we want to encourage you to do but, brothers and sisters, we're going to invite now to the front our, our clerk. I believe we have a reading, a first reading that we need to have. And we are going to have our first reading.
Blessed Sabbath, church family. Oh, wait a minute. Blessed Sabbath, church family. It's so good to be in the house of the Lord. I don't know how many of you had a rough week, but I had a rough week, so I'm happy to be in the house of the Lord today. We have a transfer of membership request for Kaminsky Raymond from the Daughter of Zion SGA Church to Bethany French SGA Church in Boynton Beach, Florida. And this is the first reading. All right, thank you so much. That is the first reading. We will have our second reading next week, next week. So brothers and sisters, of course, this is a house of prayer and we are asking uh, that you please remember the Wells family in prayer. We know uh, our great, uh, one of our great patriarchs, uh, brother Bobby Wells, he did pass away. And tomorrow will be the funeral. Tomorrow will be the funeral. Uh, and there will be the viewing that will be held here at 10 a.m. And then the uh, funeral service will start at 11, 11 a.m. tomorrow. Now, the, there will be a repass, and the repass will be held in the gym, uh, and so immediately following the funeral service, but we are asking that you remember the family in prayer. Brother Bobby Wells will be missed, uh, always was a faithful member, loved being in the house of God, uh, but we want to remember the family in prayer as they go through this difficult, difficult time. Um, one of the things that I do want to also mention as we uh, transition a little, that this past, this past Tuesday we did have a board meeting and uh, being that a number of our elders actually moved away, uh, some unfortunately have passed away as well, uh, the church board decided to add to our elders board add to our elders board and what the church decided to do was to actually elect uh, brother Blackett, Samuel Blackett, to be an elder here at the Daughter of Zion Church. And of course, brother Blackett has always been a faithful member here at the church and uh, we are just so delighted and pleased to have uh, brother Blackett now serve as an elder. And so I know that right now he's running around even though uh, he has now been elected as a elder he's always a deacon at heart and we know that he's active somewhere uh, here uh, but when you see him definitely congratulate him and encourage him amen um, again few individuals we want to remember in prayer uh, we are asking that you please remember brother times in prayer uh, we're asking that you remember elder Farrell's uh, brother-in-law in prayer as he has his health issues uh, we're asking that you remember sister Annie Brooks in prayer uh, sister Denise James in prayer as well as sister Andrew Knight Wells in prayer it is so good looking in the audience to see sister Gertman amen sister Gertman is in the house of God and that is a blessing uh, we know that she is a warrior a fighter even though she's she's fighting that battle uh, with cancer we know uh, that cancer is not uh, stronger than her and she's here in the house of God and it's just so good to see her but we're asking church family that you just remember her in prayer as well uh, remember sister Watkins in prayer sister Watkins unfortunately had to be hospitalized uh, and she's fighting her battle with cancer uh, please remember sister Watkins in prayer as well as sister Brooke in prayer as she is recovering from her stroke but brothers and sisters again today is a very special day uh, this is the first weekend of our revival and today what we want to do we want to welcome our first-time visitors here uh, to the daughter of Zion Church and we know that there are a number of visitors here today and if you are a first-time visitor here at, at, at the DOZ Church we're just gonna ask that you stand to your feet so that we can just celebrate uh, your presence here today if you could just stand to your feet today any first-time visitors um, and, and I know this is one way that we can get them to stand we actually have a nice little uh, gift bag for you and so if you're a visitor here today and it's your first time uh, attending we're just asking that you stand to your feet so that we can celebrate your presence here today uh, we're asking don't be shy don't be shy we have a gift 
fill with some nice goodies and just stand to your feet if you're a first time visitor we want to celebrate you and that's okay if you don't want to stand but again we welcome all of you to this place hopefully this will not be the last time that you worship with us again we're going to have a good time in the lord these next three weeks with this revival so please come back and so that you can be blessed but at this time, what we're going to do, we're going to transition in our worship service. I believe Elder Peterkin uh, is going to lead us out now in our offertory uh, and in our intercessory prayer at this time. Happy Sabbath, church family. I should say, blessed Sabbath, church family. Y'all remember the, the, the message last Sabbath, amen? Because everybody's not happy today. But we want you to be happy because you're in the presence of God, amen? You're sitting in his house. I see a dear brother who was in an accident a few weeks ago. He's sitting here by the presence of God. We have a few other people who were sick this past week. They're here by the presence of God. And so everybody should be happy in the presence of God. And so now we're at the, the point of our program where we can return to God a portion of the blessings that he's given to us this week. Amen? There are a few ways you can do that. Number one is you can go to our church website, especially for those of you who are listening online uh, on our YouTube page, or you can go to dozsda.com and click on the Adventist Giving link. Or you can go to cash tag dozsda. You can give electronically there. Uh, the third way is you can mail in your tithes and offerings. Please don't send cash. But you can mail it to P.O. Box. Uh, 7483 Daughter of Zion SDA Church Delray Beach Florida 33482 the next way you can do it is every Sabbath morning between 10 a.m. and 11 a.m. if you want to come in person and drop it off at the front door there will be a smiling deacon there deacon there who would gladly receive your tithe and offering and for those of you who are here in person after service is over in the foyer we have a collection uh, bucket where you can deposit your tithes and offerings there because you cannot be God giving amen and God loves a cheerful giver amen looking like new money brother <laughs> God bless you and so right now um, we're gonna pray and ask that God would just uh, multiply the blessings that we're returning to him father in heaven we want to thank you first of all for waking us up on this wonderful Sabbath morning we ask for forgiveness of our sins and Lord we present ourselves to you as a sacrifice first and foremost but Lord we ask that the blessings you bestowed upon us this week when you've allowed us to be able to sustain ourselves and our families we ask that the portion that we return to you our first fruits Lord please touch it and multiply it so that it would help relieve suffering and that it would help promote the gospel around the world and hasten your son's soon coming. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Now it's time for prayer. And who needs prayer? I know I need prayer. Anybody need prayer out there? For those of you who are online, you can, you can join us as we petition God's merciful throne of grace. Um, many of you, some of you are touched with a physical infirmity some of you with financial some of you are having family problems some of you are having problems in all of those categories but we all need prayer uh, we need to come closer to God God wants us to draw closer to him and so at this point in time we're going to uh, petition God's throne of grace wherever you may be we're gonna ask that you would pray with us father in heaven we come before you with humble hearts, sorrowful hearts, heavy hearts, and we're asking that you would clean us up, because Lord, what we have to present to you is nothing but filthy rags, and so we're asking that you would purchase with hyssop and make us clean, and renew a right spirit within us this morning. Father, there are many who are agonizing, in pain, physical pain. There are many who are agonizing spiritually, suffering from depression, anxiety. There are many, Lord, who are living in abusive situations. There are many who are hungry. There are many who are homeless, many who are trafficked, many who are struggling with addictions. And so, Father, right now, we want you to take all of those problems away from us.
We're pleading and asking through your son, Jesus Christ, who loves us so much that he died on Calvary's cross so that our prayers could be heard and so that we could have a closer relationship with you and be saved in your kingdom. Father, right now we want to pray for the Wells family because the prince has fallen asleep. Lord, he was beloved by many, not just here locally at this church where he grew up, but also throughout the conference in the Union area. He was a man of many talents and he touched many lives. And so right now we pray that you would be with the family as they mourn his loss, but we pray that you would comfort them and allow them to remember that he is just asleep and that death is not the end. It's just a pause that one day when Jesus comes through the clouds of glory, that our dear brother will be resurrected and it's up to us to ask for forgiveness of our sins and repent of our sins so that we too can join him and be reunited with him when Jesus comes again. We pray for Sister Gerda, we pray for Elder Farrell, we pray for Sister Andrew Knight Wells, we pray for Sister Brooke Miller. Lord, we pray for Sister Phyllis Miller, her brother who was suffering with COVID. And we pray that you would comfort the family as they buried a sister last week. And Lord, there are many others right now who've lost loved ones. There are many others right now who don't know where the next meal is coming from. There are many others right now who the lights are about to be turned off. Many others right now who are living out on the streets. We ask that you would send your comforting spirit for those who are on their sick bed, those who are languishing in a prison cell right now, those who are in war-torn countries that just want to survive. We pray for your Holy Spirit to comfort and cover and guide and protect those individuals. And Father, we pray for the revival that is taking place. We pray for those souls that have decided to go down into the watery grave and give their lives to you. We pray that you would trouble the water right now so that the four souls that are committing their lives to you would be encouragement to someone else who's sitting in the audience who may want to decide to give their life to Christ. We pray you would surround those individuals with heavenly angels because the devil is going to attack them. Strengthen them and keep them close to thy bosom. And Father, we pray for this church and we pray for the school across the street that as children that would be rightly trained in the army of the Lord would be protected and their families would be protected. We pray for a special blessing upon your church officers here that they would rightly live and represent the kingdom of heaven. Put compassion in all of our hearts. And Father, we pray for a double portion of your Holy Spirit upon your manservant who will be preaching the message this morning. We pray, Father, that you would give the message conviction that it would pierce the soul and cause someone to decide to give their life to Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. stated before, started our school year for Doja. And of course, uh, this is going to, I'm claiming it going to be a very successful year. Amen. Uh, from what I understand, we have uh, roughly, what is it, two, what is it, 100 and, 120 kids uh, were registered for school, which uh, that, that's an uptick from last year. Amen. And so what we want to do at this time, we want to, of course, uh, introduce our staff. And we're just so blessed to have Sister uh, Wainwright. This is her second tour as our principal here uh, at, at Doja. And she is very hardworking. She loves the children. And so we're just going to invite our principal, Sister Wainwright, to the front. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Good morning, church family. 
What a pleasure it is to be home. This is home for me now. It was 20 plus years ago, Pastor, when I first walked through these doors, and God has blessed us to be back here again. But I just want to say thank you, God, for blessing Daughter of Zion Junior Academy. He has bestowed many blessings upon us these past two years that I've been here. We have, well, we have faced difficulties with the pandemic, but with God's grace, we made it through. Amen. As we begin this new school year, we begin with an, an excitement and an anticipation for our new visions and our new plans and our new purposes for this school year. We have a dedicated faculty, staff, and our school board members, our church members, that are here to see these plans go through. We're ready to see these visions go through so we can help our students and our staff to become the best that God wants us to be. Amen. I would like to just take a few moments to introduce our staff. I'm at the point where I have to have notes now, so I don't want to forget anybody's name. But our staff and faculty for the 2022 school year, if when I call your name, you'll please stand and come forward. Our longest standing member of our school, Mrs. Willardine Fulmore, our administrative assistant, Luana McCoy, our treasurer, doing an excellent job with our finances and keeping us fiscally sound. Rika Ford Ordalis, our kindergarten teacher. Carmita Stewart, first grade. Lula Faison, second grade. And we have two new kids on the block, Yvonne Smith in our third grade and Angel Davis, one of our own in our fourth grade. Andrea Kelly, our fifth grade teacher. Yours truly, Audrey Wainwright, our sixth grade teacher. And Karen Jones, our seventh and eighth grade teacher. I'd like to also call Miss Sylvia Martin, who is our assistant teacher in grades one through four, if she'd come forward. Our kitchen staff, Phyllis Miller, food service director. Dalvis Ebanks, Sabrina Bertillo, and Devin Gabriel, a part of our cafeteria staff. Our janitorial staff, Jean Alexander, I call her Mimi, and you do too, and Mrs. Benoit. I would like to also give a special thank you to our school board members. And if they're here, please come forward because we're all in this together. Robin Bucart, our school board chair. Pastor Bennett Newton. Luana McCoy, treasurer. Latoya Royal, home and school leader. Dr. Kalisha Walden. Dr. Stacy Ann Smith. We have two new board members this year, Michelle Bethel and Suzanne Pierre, and Elder William Alberry. I would be amiss if I did not mention our Elder, I'm sorry, Brother Joseph Taylor, who's always at our school helping out, bringing the deacons when necessary, and Brother Duran Penn, who has come and done many, many things for our school. I just found out recently, yesterday, that we have a new person joining our team, and that is Chaplain Newton. I don't know his first name, but Chapter Aaron Newton, who will be coming over and giving Bible studies to our students. I am so excited about that. Over 30 individuals dedicated to Adventist Christian education, specifically at Doja. These individuals are giving their time, their knowledge, their expertise, their wisdom to the success of our students' education, spiritually and academically. In the book Education, it says, higher than the highest human thought can reach is God's ideal for his children. Godliness, God-likeness is the goal to be reached. Our mission, our goal, is to truly teach Christian standards 
and develop academic excellence. If you would be a part of our team, you have three things you can do. You can pray, you can support, and you can volunteer. We thank you, God, for the many blessings you've given us, and we thank all of those that have come together as we continue to bless our students. Bless us now as we continue in Adventist Christian education. Thank you. Amen, amen. Uh, if I could quote Sister Bright, she just said it, stated that this is the dream team, amen? Uh, and so we, we really do want to thank all of these individuals for their commitment to Christian education. Uh, it's not easy working for the Lord. And what we have to understand is that anything that God has ordained, anything that God has blessed, the devil is trying to destroy. And so this school year has started uh, and there have been some challenges, uh, but we know that God is greater, amen? amen? And so what we want to do at this time, we want to have just a prayer, a dedication uh, over our faculty, our staff, our volunteers, that God can have his will in his way this brand new school year but but can we add our day can we add our daycare in that yes, prayer yes 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 we would definitely add our daycare as well so let us pray at this time heavenly father lord we want to thank you uh, for this group of dedicated individuals uh, we thank you for their commitment to work for you and now lord as this brand new school year has started uh, we know that there are challenges that are going to come their way. Uh, we know that there will be obstacles that are going to come their way. But Lord, we know that if you abide with us, if you walk with us, uh, that we will be able to face whatever comes our way. Uh, so we're asking now, Lord, that you be with our teachers, that you give them the courage and the strength and the energy that they need to do their job and to do it well. Uh, Lord, we're asking that, that you uh, send angels that excel in power and strength to surround the school. Uh, we know what have happened to, to other schools and other institutions, but Lord, this is your school, and we're asking that you protect it, that there will be no hurt, harm, or danger to befall on any of our children or our faculty or staff this school year. Uh, Lord, we're asking that your spirit of love and peace can reside uh, at Doja. Uh, that, that your presence can fill the hallways in the classroom. Uh, that, that our young people can develop and grow academically, but most importantly, that they can grow and develop spiritually. Uh, Lord, we ask that you bless all of the students, that you bless all of the parents, that you bless the teachers, the faculty, the staff, the workers, the volunteers. Uh, for their commitment to you and Lord save us in your kingdom this we pray Jesus name amen amen and so brothers and sisters we do want to encourage you to continue to pray for Doja and the staff uh, that we can have a successful year this year amen, amen. thank you so much great privilege and the honor of introducing our speaker for the hour. Our speaker, Pastor George Florman, uh, is a product of Christian education. Uh, he's a proud graduate of Miami Union Academy. Uh, after hearing the call of God on his life, he decided to enroll at Oakwood University and to earn a bachelor's of theology degree at that great institution. Uh, because he is an educated man and he believes in education, he decided to further his studies and he enrolled at Andrews University 
and he earned a Master's of Divinity at that institution. Uh, I believe right now he's actually enrolled uh, in school working on a doctoral degree because he wants to be the sharpest instrument in the hands of God. Uh, our speaker today is a very talented man of God. Uh, he has had the opportunity to preach in various different countries, uh, to do various evangelistic efforts. Uh, he has renovated church buildings. Uh, he has won many souls to the Lord. Uh, but, but one of the things that uh, he would probably tell you, one of his greatest accomplishments, is marrying the love of his life, Sonia. Uh, I believe Sonia is here. Uh, she's somewhere here or maybe in the mother's room. Uh, but, but she did uh, take the track to, to be with him today. And uh, he is appreciative of her support and her love. Uh, Pastor Florent Mon and I, we go way back. Uh, and there's so many stories I would love to tell, uh, but, but I won't tell them. Uh, but one thing that I did share is that Pastor Florman was our star defensive end on my flag football team at Oakwood. Um, and so, um, of course, Pastor Florman is a man of God, man who is dedicated to the cause of God. Uh, there's so many other things that he could have done in life. Uh, but, but he realized uh, that, that God is on the verge of coming back and he wanted to dedicate his life and his service and his essence to the Lord and that's why he's been pastoring in the Southeastern Conference for roughly 17 years. Uh, he has pastored uh, in Central Florida. He's pastored all across this conference and presently right now he is the pastor of the West Park Seventh-day Adventist Church believe that is in Pembroke Pines, West Park, West Park, there we go, West Park, Florida, and so uh, they are in a building project, and he's leading them to do great and wonderful things in the Lord. And so, after our special music from Dr. Stacy Smith, uh, the next voice you will hear is none other than my friend, my brother, uh, Pastor Dr. George Florimond, hear ye him.
give God an additional amen. We want to thank Dr. Smith for that reminder that we do have a daily bread. Come on, somebody. And God, I want to just first and foremost, uh, just to say a word of thanks to your pastor, Elder Leonard Newton. Come on, somebody say amen. Uh, he is a man with a big heart that gives. I have experienced his benevolence many times in my, in my life. And I'm so thankful for him as a friend, for his ministry, and for being my quote-unquote big brother in the ministry. Come on, somebody say amen. And I'm also grateful to see you all out this morning. Come on, somebody. I know that God has a word for you all today. And I wanted to just give my condolences to the church and more precisely to the Wells family, as I know they are dealing with bereavement uh, at this time. We, we want to just ask you today, if you would allow me just to ask you one last time, to stand to your feet as we go to 2 Kings chapter 7, beginning with verse 3. 2 Kings, if you have it on your iPhones or your Bibles in print, or if they're going to put it up on the screen, when you get to it, you can say amen. 2 Kings chapter 7, and we're going to go to verse 3. 2nd Kings chapter 7 verse 3 is where we start and the Bible says now there were four leprous men at the entrance of the gate and they said to one another why are we sitting here until we die if we say we will enter the city the famine is in the city and we shall die there and if we sit here we die also now therefore come let us surrender come on somebody the king james says fall to the army of the syrians if they keep us alive we shall live and and if they kill us we shall only die. And the Bible says, and they rose at twilight. Someone say twilight. To go to the camp of the Syrians. And when they had come to the outskirts of the Syrian camp, to their surprise, no one was there. Verse 6, for the Lord, come on somebody, had caused the army of the Syrians to hear the noise of chariots and the noise of horses and the noise of a great army so they said to one another look the king of Israel has hired against us the kings of the Hittites and the kings of the Egyptians to attack us therefore they arose and fled to your neighbor and say at twilight oh at twilight and they left the camp intact their tents their horses and their donkeys and they 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 fled for their lives verse 8 and when they arose when and when these lepers came to the outskirts of the camp they went into one tent and ate and drank have mercy and carried from it silver and gold and clothing and went and hid them then they came back and entered come on somebody another tent and carried some from there also and went and hid it for the next few moments beloved I want to just speak to you on the subject matter it's already worked out uh, it's already worked out father this is your moment remove me from this preaching experience hide me beneath and behind the cross the Word of God is simple if you be lifted up you will draw all men onto you and so today we're gonna lift up the name of Jesus and men and women, boy and girl, will come back to Christ. So as you open God's word, my prayer simply is this. Father, open our eyes that we're able to see. 
open our ears so we're able to hear. But above all, we ask and pray, Father, open up our hearts that we might receive you today. For we ask it in your name. Let everyone say amen and amen. You may be seated. You may be seated in God's presence. It's already <clears throat> worked out. Can I give you a little bit of context this morning? You see, the descendants of Abraham, the chosen and the beloved people of God, the very ones to whom God had promised a land flowing with milk and honey, they who were now in the possession of this blessed realm on both the eastern and the western banks of the Jordan and stretching us far west as even unto Samaria. These are the same descendants of Abraham whom had previously made the journey beyond the Jordan to where God had promised Joshua that from this day forward that no man would be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. And as I was with Moses, come on somebody, so shall I be with thee. These same blessed of the Father who had in time past had been victorious are now here in the text in a quite dangerous situation and circumstance. They have gone from being friends of God to being self-proclaimed foes of God. They have been corralled and caught up and caged in and captured and essentially they have now been forced to retreat within the city walls of Samaria, <clears throat> the then capital of Israel. Beloved, the Syrian army was besieging Israel in Samaria. They had effectively encircled and surrounded the city. They had totally cut off Israel's connection to the outside world. And so thus the flow of traffic in and out of the city was slowed down. The flow of goods and resources had been forcefully embargoed by the Syrian king and all of his army. No one and no goods could go into the city or could come out of the city. Are you with me today? Their beloved city walls that served as an additional layer of protection for them was now also serving as a structure of their own imprisonment. God's people were locked in behind what essentially were, had become rather <clears throat> prison walls. You know, I, I find it quite interesting today that the one thing that they thought would stand to protect them was now the very same thing that now entrapped them. The one thing that they thought would protect them would protect them was now the same thing that ensnared and entangled them. Similarly, it is not lost on me that some of us here today have erected walls and institutions to serve as a form of additional protection only to have it turn around and to be imprisoned by the very same things that were meant to protect us. Y'all going to get with me in a second. We have laws that are, are set up to keep order and peace in our society and within our communities, which in turn have been been erroneously uh, utilized to create a disparity in how people from different socio-economic polarities are treated. Yes, if you're wealthy and if you're connected and if you're a part of the majority, you are least likely to be gunned down by those who are paid to, be, to protect and to serve. 
Uh, if you're wealthy and connected and are part of the majority, you are least likely to be prosecuted and persecuted to the fullest extent of the law. Yeah, yeah. If you're wealthy and connected and a part of the majority, uh, uh, then you are more likely to be in a district with a school of high excellence. You are more likely to have access to proper nutritional diet, uh, have access to quality education, um, and have access to the world's number one healthcare system. Uh, but the same institutions and laws adversely, adversely affect the unwealthy and the unconnected. Y'all ain't talking to me. And the undereducated and those who were or have brown and black skin. You see, these institutions and laws create a system of walls that 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 disparately uh, that if not careful will imprison us and create disparity whereby there is little access to wealth and money management and 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 education for those of us and and, and even the education in our neighborhoods have been dubbed as a pipeline uh, uh, from schools to prisons these same institutions and these same laws create such a disparity that literally some municipalities have relegated, listen to this right here, to wall in certain neighborhoods or hoods, uh, or as we affectionately call them, or even ghettos, not to keep the crime out of the hood, but to keep the crime in the hood. <clears throat> Can I pause parenthetically to just let you all know what I found out about walls and structures and institutions y'all gonna get with me today that over the time they almost always all fall down especially though wall, those walls that stand in the way of uh, of the will of God and the way of the people of God that's why the Soviet Union erected a wall of communism that literally separated the East and West Berlin but it was in God God's will that that wall would come down. Y'all gonna get with me today. That the wall of injustice uh, uh, that was set up through Euro European imperialism uh, throughout the continent of Africa and mostly South Africa had to come down because it was out of sync with the will of God. That 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 that, that all were created in the image of God. That that wall of slavery, the the wall of Jim Crowism, the wall of racism that plagues us. Uh, uh, in the United States of America is not in vogue with the Creator's command to love one another as God has loved us and in particular I believe that this wall it's God himself will eventually break it down uh, y'all don't believe that God tears down walls I can't hear nobody but can we go through uh, somebody's uh, uh, testimony we can ask <coughs> Rahab and a Rahab uh, and the inhabitants of Jericho and they would tell you that God tears down walls uh, and if you were to ask Jesus uh, Jesus would tell you that he asserted that he would tear down the temple and in the three days time again uh, that he would raise it up come on somebody and ultimately you can even and ask uh, the enemy of our soul Satan himself and he will have to confess that through the death and crucifixion and resurrection of Christ that Jesus rose up the grave with all power in his hand and he went down and kicked down the doors and the gates of hell and the Bible says even the gates of hell could not prevail it I'm trying to tell somebody today that God tears down walls uh, can I pause any longer to just tell you that God tears down walls uh, he's got the power to tear down the wall of imprisonment, uh, the walls of social injustices uh, and the walls of I can't hear nobody, prejudices uh, the walls of worldviews and strange beliefs, uh, not only that but God will break down the walls of sickness and the wall of diseases and the wall of maladies, uh, if you got cancer God can break down that wall uh, if you got all kinds of other diseases God can break down that wall, uh, if your family has been struck down and broken and is in pieces God can put it together again because I believe that my God tears down walls the 
And so Paul says, I am persuaded that nothing can separate us from the love of God. No persecution, no distress, no tribulation, no famine, no death, no quality of life, no sickness or disease, no angels, no principalities, no powers, no things that are present or things that are yet to come. And watch this, no wall, yes, no wall, no matter its height or its depth, nothing shall separate us from the love of God because God is with willing to tear down walls and so be very careful of walls be very careful of institutions that appear to be a benefit that it will not one day become your own source of imprisonment one of my favorite authors uh, sister white reminds us uh, concerning this particular issue she says judgment upon judgment had befallen the israelites during the reign of hazael the syrian and watch this who had been anointed by to be the scourge of this apostate nation and here it is as a result of israel's apostasy as a result of god's chosen apostasy the Syrians had laid siege on their beloved city. A famine essentially swept throughout the land and desperation begins to set in. Life became impossible, food became hard to find, and water supplies all but dried up and was scarce. And, and for all emptied in purpose, chaos began to set in. Have you ever witnessed, beloved, the kind of chaos and confusion that desperate times brings? Uh, they say that desperate times calls for desperate measures and here in florida we are a witness uh, of desperate times every year I, I know we've been blessed lately and we have been hit by a hurricane but but just just sit here and watch the next time a storm is approaching you'll know what desperate times uh, is all about and what chaos is all about i can't hear nobody who want to testify with me I, i'm gonna testify all by myself i was living in lakeland and i waited to the day before the hurricane sat in come on somebody pray for the pastor uh, to go buy me some stuff for the hurricane i went to Publix. there was no water no canned goods no batteries no flashlights i said oh no i'm in trouble chaos began to set in desperation began to set in i went down to home depot and i sat in line for three hours just to get four measly pieces of plywood but, but that's not the worst part the worst part was that can you imagine that as i stood in line for four hours with other people that I saw a worker from Home Depot began to count people from the front of the line meaning they were about to cut the line off somewhere behind me and that those who had come in behind me who were waiting for two hours or maybe one hour were told sorry there is no more wood for you I'm talking about desperation you you need to put gas in your car and you go down to the local gas station and they don't raise the price from 230 to five six dollars price gouging you in the midst of adversity can you imagine this kind of chaos this is where we find the people of God in the text chaos has set in for uh, uh, the Bible says at, at, at this time uh, that they are so desperate that that, <coughs> that they are selling uh, all kinds of meat at the front gate of the city it's in the text if you read you'll find out that they're selling uh, they're selling uh, heads of donkeys to eat these are God's people who believe in the Levitical and Leviticus but yet because of desperate time and they are filled uh, with hunger the Bible says that at a premium they're selling donkey meat for, for consumption at such a premium that but only the elites are able to afford it beloved I want you to know that in the absence of hope people will do just about anything for it is in the absence of hope that people take their lives it is in the absence of hope that people turn to a life of crime it, it is in the absence of hope that young men and young women settle for and and, and settle into relationships that bring God shame y'all ain't talking to me in the absence of hope that it is that we find a, a struggling marriage couple mar married couples choose divorce courts over divine counsel it is in the absence of hope that desperate people give into their addictions and that they give into their despondency 
that they give into a faithless existence and, the, and this king is so desperate watch this that he hires messengers to go kill the man of God he sends them to go kill Elisha because he's upset with the message from the messenger y'all gonna get with me today it's interesting uh, that, that 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 nothing changes under the sun uh, uh you know they say uh, the game remains the same only the players change come on somebody and and what we find interesting is that these people attack the messenger because they can't get to the message giver come on somebody Elijah tells them, because of your reprobate minds, uh, because of what you have done, God has caused for uh, uh, Hazael, the king of Syria, to take us over. Uh, but someone ought to come to the conclusion today that when we are in the wrong, we should not look to put the blame on somebody else. Come on, somebody. Someone ought to come to the conclusion today and say, it's me oh it's me <laughs> uh, it's not you but it's me <clears throat> uh, y'all don't want to talk to me turn to your neighbor say neighbor oh that's the wrong neighbor turn to your other say neighbor oh it's me <laughs> Oh, it's me. Introspectively, take a respons take responsibility for your, your own famine. Don't shift the blame, but rather admit it's me. And your acknowledgement is not necessarily an admittance of guilt, but it is a call towards God saying, if we ever needed the Lord before, we sure do need him now. I remember being taught back in Sabbath school, the song, it's me, it's me, oh Lord standing in the need of prayer it ain't my mother's not my father but it's me oh lord standing in a need of prayer it's not my brother or my sister come on somebody but it's me oh lord and, and i've come to tell somebody that we are all standing in the need of prayer that i the absent from the hand of god we are gonna be like these four lepers stuck in our uh, in a place where we have no good options uh, either we sit here and we die or go back into the city and we die there or we go forward to the enemy and potentially they will catch us and save us and they may also try to kill us and listen to me when we find ourselves in these circumstances where we have no good answer for our situations we need to fall down on our knees and say God it's me standing in the need of prayer can I tell you today, and I'm taking my time because I want to make sure you understand this gospel. I want to know, you to know that God already has a word for your famine season. Oh, I can't get nobody to say amen. I, God, God you, you must be feasting up in here today. Come on, listen to me. Uh, God has a word for your famine season. You see, verse 1 of chapter 7 starts off with a prophecy from God. This time tomorrow, there will be flour for sale. Not only is it going to be flour, but the Bible says it's going to be what? Fine flour. And there's a distinguish, uh, 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 the, the author distinguishes between the kind of flour. He qualifies the flour. It's going to be fine flour. Uh, additionally, there will be available two measures of barley for everyone. Two measures of barley suggest that there will be enough provisions that they will no longer have to be on a ration of one measure of barley at a time. Uh, and so, so God literally is telling them through Elisha that as a result of God's goodness at this time tomorrow I know you can't see it I know the Syrian army is still encamped around the city I know you're still in prison within your walls I know that there is no water no food the, the situation is bad but in 24 hours time the men of God says uh, you're gonna have double for your trouble uh, but it gets better well, what, what's right god, how good god's uh, word is in chapter 6 verse 23 the desperate israelites were paying a king's ransom for weird food but tomorrow god's word simply is that there will be such an abundance of food that the inflated prices are going to come down come on somebody say amen no more being overtly taxed for the basic necessities i'm so thankful that god the god i serve uh, knows my needs uh, and knows what i can't afford come on somebody 
But here it is. Uh, 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 I want you to know that that that, that God's proclamation sometimes uh, is what uh, is God's proclamation sometimes as crazy as it may seem. The only way that we can uh, uh, move into the, the the will of God is by believing the word of God. Elisha says, tomorrow this time, y'all going to have food. So much food that, 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 that you don't even know what to do with it. But the king's messenger, it's in the text, says to Elisha, even if God were to open the windows of heaven, such a blessing could not be. And what's your response to this guy? Elisha says, because of your unbelief, <laughs> tomorrow you will only see it with your eyes. But you're not going to be able to partake of it. Mm, my God, could it be that year after year, month after month, week after week, we are living below the expectation of God's calling on our lives? Because, watch this, we fail to believe the word of God that he has pronounced over us. Y'all ain't talking to me. Could, could it be that the reason why you're still struggling is because God told you that he has a, a specific mission for you to accomplish and you refuse to do it? Could it be that the reason why we're where we are in this famine season is because we have seen God's word, we have heard God's word, but instead of, of obeying and walking in the word of God, we have decided that we can't trust because it seems absurd that in 24 hours time we will go from famine to feasting. And so sometime. God has got to remove a blessing in order to help you to believe in the word of God. Y'all going to care with me today. And I want you to know that it is from the standpoint of our unbelief that we have moved, God, we have moved a benevolent God to a place where he has to withhold from us blessings that ought to be ours. But I'm so encouraged by the word of God. I am so emboldened by the promises of God. I am so elated by the provision and the providence of God. Uh, I don't know what your tomorrow will bring, but I, uh, what I do know is that with whatever obstacles uh, that you have in your path, uh, God already has a word for your breakthrough. Come on, somebody. But I do know that God is already operating in your future for the benefit of your right now. Come on, somebody. I do know that God is already fighting off demons on your behalf. I, I do know that God is already making a way out of no way. That God is already charting and plotting a positive chart for your life. Uh, and if we're going to be successful beloved, we have to believe in God. We have to walk by faith uh, and we have to hope against hope uh, in the surety of the words and the promises of God. For the word of God says that, 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 that the just will walk by faith uh, and not by sight. Uh, and here it is. Uh, God has already given you a word for your situation. To the hungry, he says, I'll be your bread. Y'all ain't talking to me. To the thirsty, he says, I'll be your living water. To the afflicted, he says, I'll be still, for the Lord will fight your battles for you. To the weak and weary, he says, I give strength to the weary and power to the weak. And to the tempted and tired, and to the tried, he says, submit yourself to God and resist the devil and he's going to have to flee uh, to the bondman, the one who is uh, uh, in shackles he says that he, that a son says free is free indeed uh, to the fearful he says do not be afraid uh, do not be discouraged for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go to the needy he says my God will supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory uh, to the ambitious he says take delight in the Lord uh, he will give you the desires of your heart somebody ought to know that God has given you a word uh, for your circumstances uh, to the sinner he says if we confess our sins uh, he is faithful uh, and he is just uh, and he will forgive us of our sins uh, and cleanse us from all of our unrighteousness uh, to the unloved he says though the mountains be shaken uh, and though the hills be removed uh, yet my unfailing love for you will not be shaken and my covenant for you shall not be removed and when all breaks down when all hell breaks loose uh, remember that God 
God says uh, he's still your bridge uh, over troubled waters. Uh, he's still bread uh, on your table. Uh, he's still shoes uh, on your feet. Uh, yes, God has a word for you. Even in the midst of uncertainty. Now, now, what I want, I've told you <laughs> what you need to know, but now I must tell you what you need to do. Are you with me? I'm almost done. I'm going to give you this and I'm going I'm to take my speech to take my seat. Um, watch how God orchestrates this. Let me set this thing up for you today. While the prophet Elisha and the king's counselor are yet speaking, at that very moment, we, the Bible says there are four lepers who are forbidden to enter to the city because of their uncleanness. But unlike the king's counselor, their desperation does not lead them to a lack of faith, but their, their desperation leads them to plot a course of action. These four lepers are motivated as a result of their desperate state. They are destitute and adding insult to injury. They are without any good option, the Bible says. If they go into the city, they surely are going to die. If they remain at the gates, they will also die. Perhaps if they make their way to the Syrian camp, there is hope that they will be captured alive, but at the end, they might also die. And here it is, uh, they have no good answers for their circumstance. And hear me now, the question that they ask of themselves is one that we must ask of ourselves in our famine season. Shall we sit here and die? Oh, uh, y'all ain't talking to me. The, the marriage is falling apart. Am I going to just sit down and do nothing? Oh, oh, my bank account is a mess. Am I going to sit down and do nothing? My, my boss is threatening to fire me, and I have a whole bunch of mouths to feed. Am I going to just sit here and, and do nothing? Y'all, have you ever been in a circumstance where you have no good options available to you? You, you, you can't call nobody because you've already, uh, 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 exp uh, uh, you've already utilized all of your resources. Uh, you ain't got nobody to lend you a little bit of money, and you're all by yourself in your situation and it seems as though nobody can come to your rescue but I'm so thankful that even in the midst of your trial God is still attentive to your need and the Bible says watch this at twilight Oh, y'all don't know when to shout. At, at twilight, uh, well, not at nighttime, uh, but at twilight. Watch this. In, in other words, uh, when the sun is beginning to set, uh, you, you know, when the day is over, uh, when it seems that the sun is setting on your success, uh, when it seems like the sun is setting on your marriage, when it seems like the sun is setting on your tribulations, your trials, when it seems like the sun is setting on your cancer and on your health tribulations, uh, I'm so glad glad that even when the sun seems to set, God still has a move in itself. God still has a way to make a way out of no way. And the Bible says at that same moment when the sun is getting to set on these four lepers, that the same sun is also setting on their enemies. For at twilight, their enemies hear God's, oh, the noise of God's rumbling. They hear chariots. They hear an army. And the Bible says in the midst of all of their empowered states, they begin to flee. And at the same moment as they're fleeing, these four lepers are entering into their, uh, into their spoils. Uh, I'm so thankful y'all can sit there, but I'm going to preach this sermon how God gave me because I realize uh, that there have been times in my life uh, when I could not know how God was going to make a way. I realize uh, that, that, that a few days after my son comes home from the hospital that, that he hasn't even spent a day in his bed yet that I get a call from a, uh, from a 
up from a police officer telling me that my mom died in a car accident. I, I did not know what to do. I did not know where to go. All I knew is, God, you're going to make a way out of nowhere. So I said, should I sit here and die? Should I sit here and swallow in my uh, despondency? But I'm so faithful that God, in the midst of my sadness, in my twilight hour, begins to work and work in me. He's a son, the same God who has been with your mom is the same God that will always be with you. And I pulled myself by my bootstrap, took my son out of his crib, not even 12 hours in his crib. I took him up, got my wife, and with tears running down my eyes, I drove all the way because my father needed my help. But here's again the testimony. The testimony is in the midst of my despondency, God gave me glory. In the midst of my trials, God gave me a testimony. In the midst of my heartache, God gave me healing. And I'm here today to tell somebody that what God has done for me, he can do for you. Our circumstances may differ. Our situations may be different. But I submit to you that all of us have a famine hour. That all of us have a famine season. And in your famine season, you ought to know that we serve a God who sits up high but decides to, uh, so, to, 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 to dwell below a God who's so in touch with our infirmities that he doesn't let us deal with our sickness by ourselves but he comes in and he decides that he's gonna uh, fall him uh, make himself uh, available to the sickness of man all right, y'all ain't with me, so I'm going to give you this last analogy. God literally leaves glory to come down to earth, to be enveloped uh, with the nature of sin uh, in order that he might help us in the midst of our sins. All right, y'all still ain't with me, so let me give you this, this analogy. Uh, about four weeks ago, my kids went to uh, 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 v VBS, and uh, my son came home, the baby, only 12 months old, and he has, he's, he, he, he is listless, lustless. He is, uh, uh, he is not moving. He is, we, we're thinking something is wrong. He's running a temperature 101, 102. So we said maybe his teeth are, uh, teeth are coming in, and so we take him to the doctor, he gets tested he has COVID they test a four-year-old he has COVID <clears throat> my wife and I both get tested neither one of us are positive so we say okay let's roll with, let's roll with it on Saturday that's on Thursday on Saturday we both get tested my wife is positive I'm still negative so now I'm sitting here saying to myself there's no way my wife is going to be able to handle two sick kids. So I said to myself, I have an, and I said, and I looked to myself, I said to my wife, sorry, I think it's better for me to get sick too. <laughs> she says, that makes no sense. Why would you want to catch COVID? I said, well, if we're all are sick, then we can all help each other. Y'all ain't talking to me in this place. So what I do as a good, good father, I take the baby one, the one that has the, 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 the cut it first. I say, I hold them and I allow them to cough in my face. Come on, somebody. And he, 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 he does what, what he's supposed to do. And literally, literally, the next day I go and get tested and I am positive. And I said to myself, as, as, uh, as, uh, as unsensical as that was for me to get sick in order to, for me to help them, I said to myself, ain't that like what, what Jesus did? That Jesus, in order to save us from our sickness, y'all ain't talking to me, he leaves a perfection of glory. He leaves a perfection of heaven. He leaves the adoration of angels. Uh, and he comes down, uh, divinity wrapped up in humanity. Yes, he's God's son, but he's also Mary's baby. Yes, he's God's unique, but he's also a born of flesh. And the Bible says he is in this wrapped up humanity. He is filled with the nature of sin, but he never sins. Yes, the Bible says he's tempted, but never once does he fall. Because Jesus is on a mission. He knows that if he falls, that my life will be in jeopardy. Jesus knows that if he falls, your life will be in jeopardy but what he does is uh, he walks among men uh, he is tempted uh, he is tried uh, but never falls uh, he is beaten uh, he is lied upon he is crucified he is killed uh, but early Sunday morning 
he rises up with all power in his hands hey and because of that he's given us the ability to say that it's already worked out your salvation is in God's hands it's already worked out somebody ought to say amen because if salvation was in your hand we'd be in trouble oh your marriage is in God's hands it's already worked out your health is in God's hands it's already worked out you may not have a good option but it's in God's hand that's the best option it's already worked out and so I'm preaching to someone here today who perhaps right now you find yourself in this precarious circumstance where if you go forward you lose if you remain you lose and if you go back you lose today here is the appeal I'm gonna give you Jesus because with Jesus you can never lose oh eyes are closed and heads are bowed this is the appeal I must make today to somebody who doesn't know that God has already worked it out somebody right now is dealing with a broken heart trust me I know what it like it's like to have a broken heart to not know not know if you'll ever see a loved one again I know what it's like to have a broken heart but today God can mend your hearts somebody right now you've received a divorce decree it's on your table in your home waiting for you to sign it you don't know what to do God has an answer for you somebody right now the doctor said we've we have ex, we have we have we have reached the extent of our medical resources we've tested your you for this that and the other we we've done all the therapies possible there's nothing left for us to do today I tell you Jesus Jesus says it's already worked out there's there's someone here today and I'm just going through the roll call of the issues of humanity. There's someone here today, huh, your finances have got you so far in the back that you don't know how you're going to make it, not next month, but next week. You don't know how you're going to put food in your children's lunch bag for school on Monday. Y'all ain't talking to me. You have no good options. But today, I'm telling you that God has it already worked out for you so there's someone here today who needs to be prayed for that whatever God's word is for you that you would receive it and walk in it because right now you don't know you don't you, you're too weak to even imagine what God can do but I'm so thankful that God says eyes have not seen and ears have not heard neither has it entered into the heart of man what God is going to the only talking to me I'm so glad that the Bible says he's able to do above and beyond all we can ask think and even imagine so right now someone needs to say pastor pray for me I'm in this circumstance I'm in a famine season and I don't know what to do if that's you I'm gonna ask for you to stand wherever you are because I want to pray that God that God the God of glory will give you the best option give you guidance and direction will give you an avenue whereby you can make it where are you praise the Lord and if you're standing you might as well come on to the front it's a revival you can come on down if you can come on down then I want to make an appeal specifically for someone someone who's been struggling I mean you're struggling you, you haven't been you have not been able to find guidance and direction for your life listen to me right now is your opportunity of a lifetime God says in your own human experience you can't see past 
the next second. <laughs> you don't know. You know that if you stay here, you die. If you go forward, you die. If you go backwards, you die. So you are stuck in your rut. But here it is. Today, Jesus says, if, if you make your calling and election sure today, God has an additional option. And that additional option is that with Jesus Christ, you will never lose. So I want to make this appeal that someone here, we've been preaching for three days and there, there is six more days of preaching for this revival. But someone says, Pastor, I want to make my calling an election sure today. You want to make this thing, you want to seal it through the watery grave of baptism. Where are you? Somebody, I'm talking to you. A young man, a young woman, a man, a girl. You have been, you have been living in a paralyzed state, stuck in the right now. But today I want to give you a Jesus who will allow you to move forward. If that's you, wherever you are, just raise your hand. Where are you? We're not going to hold it for too long. Praise God, we have one. Praise the Lord. Where are you? Where are you? Raise your hand. We're not going to keep it for too long. We've got to go. We've got to go. Time is spent. Let's pray. Father, it's already worked out. And I'm not just talking about what's happening here on earth. Those things are fleeting. We know that that, that ha we know that this 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 world has an expiration date on it. Life has an expiration date as we know it. But what I'm talking about more so today is everlasting life. Some of us we don't know beyond a surety that we have salvation. But today I'm so thankful that Jesus, while we were in the midst of our sin, was working away for our salvation. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And now it doesn't matter. The vilest offender has access to everlasting life. And so today we are thankful that you've worked out our salvation. Not only have you worked out a salvation, but you've worked out a plan of justification and sanctification. You've made us righteous, and now you're saying, I'm going to give you power to live in right living with me. So, Father, I pray for every person under the sound of my voice that today is making a decision. That God, you would do for them what no one else can do for, for them. That they would be able to feast on the bounties of the enemy. Everything that the enemy has stolen, God, oh God, you will give it back. You will give them resources. What I like about the story is they left everything behind. And God, because of that, your people were able to eat out of the enemy spoils God you're so great that that boss who's giving me problem you're saying that he might give me problem today but if you hang on long enough I'm gonna give you a better job oh that's the kind of God I serve he will let us eat of the enemy spoils and give us what we are in need of to make it past our tomorrows so father hear this prayer be with everyone here today be with the OZ as they are in this there is hope series i pray that that someone will find jesus hope eternal they will find you life eternal and will make you their eternal god through baptism i thank god for the one soul and those who are getting baptized today i thank god for those who came up for prayer and i pray now for all those who are seated but should have been here god i pray that you will do for them the exact same thing you do for those of us who are standing today that you'll give them an option that blows their minds. That even when they don't see it, God, you are working things out for them. So, Father, thank you in advance. Thank you for the reconciled marriages. Thank you for families being brought back together. Thank you for return health uh, to good health. Thank you, oh God, for our finances restored. Thank you, God, for what you're about to do. But when everything is said and done, Father, we'll give you all the honor and all the glory for we know that you alone are worthy to be praised 
thank you Jesus for hearing this prayer let the saints of God say amen amen can we sing that chorus praise him come on you can sing it praise him Another hearty amen for that powerful soul steering message. Thank you, Pastor Foreman, for spending these last uh, three outings with us. And for uh, those who didn't have the chance to view it until the day you miss a blessing and a treat, we thank you for coming out with your family and being a part of our worship experience here at Daughter Zion. And again, we say thank you for your, your ministry and for your message reached the part of the service where we are going to a baptismal um, service here. We have three candidates that I'm going to invite down to the front for our baptismal vows. Yes, if the three candidates would come. I want to ascribe a scene that John wrote in Revelation by individuals that was gathered around the throne and one of the angels elders answered it you know he was, the question was asked who are these that was dressed in right robes and raiment and the answer said and they asked whence came to and said sir thou know us and he said unto me these are they which have come out of great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore are they before the throne of God and shall serve him and a night and day in his temple and he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. And we have individuals who are dressed in white robes and looking forward to that scenery to describe that John did in Revelation the seventh chapter. And we know that we all have an opportunity, have had an opportunity, or have an opportunity present for us to go down in the watery grave of baptism. And to do so, we uh, read a set of vows. And for those who are looking to be baptized this day, we ask that you raise your right hand in the affirmative, that you do agree and accept the vows that are being read before you. Do you accept Jesus Christ as your personal savior and Lord, and do you desire to live your life in a saving relationship with him? Raise your right hand in the affirmative. Do you accept the teachings of the Bible as expressed in the statement of the fundamental beliefs of the Seventh-day Adventist Church? And do you pledge by God's grace to live your life in harmony with these teachings? Do you desire to be baptized as a public expression of your belief in Jesus Christ, to be accepted in the fellowship of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, and to support the church and its mission as a faithful steward by your personal influence, tithes and offering, and a life of service? Amen. Church, you have seen and witnessed the reading and the accepting of the vows. Uh, for those who are looking to be baptized, we have Sheila Bright, Samuel Jean, and Caleb Jean. And we want to uh, express our thanks and in, in, in glad tidings to all those individuals who are getting ready to be uh, immersed in water. With that said, do I have a, a motion for the floor to accept these individuals pending successful uh, baptism to be a members of our church here at the Daughter of Zion. So it's been moved and is there a second? All right, it's been moved and second and we'll take the vote. Uh, all in favor, would you be known by saying aye, raising up your right hand. 
Any opposed? Do you take that up with Christ? It has a move in second, and we'll welcome these individuals into our body of faith here at the Daughter of Zion Seventy Adventist Church as we shall have the actual baptismal service. And so these individuals will be ushered to the back. God in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for an opportunity to worship you in prayer. As these individuals make known publicly their expression of faith by going to the water grave of baptism, we actually let you trouble the water, that you will bless this water, that it will be a blessing and a washing of a way of their past and a renewing of their future. So we ask, Lord Jesus, that your spirit come down and tabernacle with us. Bless us and keep us. In your name we do pray. Amen. Amen, amen. And so our first candidate to be baptized today is Sister Sheila Bright. And with the friends and family members who are here in support of Sister Sheila, if you could just stand to your feet at this time. Amen, amen. And as we all know that Sister Sheila is a friend to us all. She has a big heart and truly uh, she is a valuable member here at the Daughter of Zion Church. But S Sister Sheila realizes the soonness of Christ's return. And so, S Sister Sheila, because of uh, your commitment to God, uh, we now baptize you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Ghost. Glory, glory.
about to baptize actually two brothers, yeah, two young men. And, and, and you know, our next candidate is Brother Samuel Jean. And with the friends and family members who are here in support of Brother Samuel, if you could just please stand to your feet. Amen. 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 And so, Samuel, because it is your desire to put the cross before you and the world behind you, we now do baptize you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Ghost. is brother Caleb Jean. Of course, uh, younger Caleb is not going to be outdone by his older brother, and he wants to make sure that there's a great family reunion up in glory. And so, Caleb, because it is your desire to make heaven your home, uh, we now uh, baptize you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Ghost. Amen, amen. Day, uh, to see those three individuals give their heart and life to the Lord and we do appreciate the ministry of Pastor uh, Florman and so we just ask that you you pray for Pastor Florman and his family uh, that he can continue to be a light uh, in this sin sick world and so as we bring this program uh, to an end we do want to remind you uh, that this is not the last week of the revival, but next week uh, we will pick it back up. Uh, we do have another dynamic uh, speaker who will be with us in Pastor Alex Royce. He will be with us, and so we will have service at 7 p.m. on Wednesday, and then, of course, 7 p.m. on Friday night, and then he'll be with us on Sabbath morning. And so please invite your friends uh, your co-workers, your neighbors, so that they can also hear a word from the Lord uh, because we are living in the last days and we need to make sure that we're ready and we need to make sure that we uh, invite as much people as we can uh, into the house of God. Now we do want to also remind you today uh, that right after our worship service, lunch is prepared for all of our visitors and all of our church members uh, right across the street at the school. Uh, we do have to-go plates, and you can take your plates, uh, or you can even eat them uh, in the cafeteria right there. Uh, so this is for all of our members, please, and our visitors, please stay behind and enjoy the meal. We, we, we want to remind you to re remember the Wells family in prayer. Uh, that funeral service will be tomorrow uh, at 11 a.m. 10 a.m. will be the viewing of Brother Bobby Wells. Please remember the family in prayer. Uh, Brother Wells will be missed, uh, but we know that death is not the end. Amen. Uh, we know that we have a blessed hope uh, that God will come back and he will reunite those who have died in him. But at this time, we're going to end our worship service. We're going to invite you to stand to your feet for the benediction. And, uh, and after our benediction, we want to remind you that we will be collecting offering at the door. And please drop your offering at the door with our ushers, with our deacons. 
Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, once again, we thank you for this opportunity that we had to come into your house and to worship you. We thank you for your manservant, Pastor Florman, for that inspiring message uh, that he shared with us today. We thank you for seeing those three individuals give their lives completely to you. And help us, Lord, to give our lives to you daily. Help us, Lord, to be saved in your kingdom and give us the strength you've called us and designed us to be. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you all.